traveling by high-speed railway from Taipei to Taichung to explore Taiwan's second largest city in one perfect day. And I'm visiting the Rainbow Village, a tea house where the bubble tea was invented, an old glasses shop where the best desserts are being served, a night market for some food, of course, and so much more in between. And I can't wait to explore this city. Let's get started. To get to Taichung City, I have taken the high-speed railway in Taiwan and it was an experience. If you want to see that video, make sure to click on that right after this one. But now let's get going to explore. My bus has arrived. Hello. Hello. Thank you. Fifteen dollars. It has deducted from my card at the moment and I'm heading onto the bus to drive to Rainbow Village. I need to use all my muscle in my body to hold myself. I've arrived at my first stop here in Taichung and it is the Rainbow Village. Now let's enter it and I'll tell you more about it. The Rainbow Village historically has been built for the military veterans of the Chinese Civil War. And this is where they used to live like until the city suddenly decided that's it, move out, let's demolish the section and make space for new builds. And then this guy, which is also known as Rainbow Grandpa, said, no, no, not with me, and started painting all around here, on the floors, on the ceilings, on the doors, everywhere, and made this beautiful art complex that the city couldn't resist, but leave it as it is and make it a tourist spot. <laughs> I think regardless that this has been painted to avoid demolishment, it would have been such a fun place to live in with all the art and colors around you. It definitely brings some joy and color into this neighborhood. Because look, it's kind of grayish around me and this is the fun place and it has been made fun because of sad circumstances. And there we are, beauty all around us. I wish I could live in here. People write some stuff and then they hang it onto the wall. So I'm just gonna join in on that fun. Look at these little papers. They even have rainbows on them. That is so cute. All done, look at that. Let's bring that on. So there is a little hole and there are gold strings and I'm just gonna attach it. Where should I find my little spot? Let's attach it. Ta-da! I think this is him. I think this is Rainbow Grandpa. Look at him. Wow. I like that he saw how it changed the neighborhood and how his art literally became this tourist hotspot. <laughs> left the Rainbow Village and jumped onto a bus to commute to my next destination, which is roughly 40 minutes away. It's quite a long one, but once we reach this point, from there on, it's gonna be short stops everywhere and we are kind of in the city center. And the city of Taichung definitely looks like a big one. We are driving so far and I have seen shops over shops, buildings over buildings. Taichung is also known as a cultural city here in Taiwan because there are lots of art inspired things like galleries, museums, shows. There's definitely life happening here in a very fun way. And I'm very excited to reach the city center in a minute and then get exploring. Oh, that is a packed station there. Okay. I'm heading now to my ice cream store. It's definitely not the weather for ice cream, but who cares? <laughs> the weather here in Taiwan has been so fluctuating. It's sometimes cold, sometimes hot, sometimes rainy, and anything in between. I think I can see it. Just by the building outside, it looks already so historical. Look at it. Oh, wow. Thank you. So pretty. That is so cool. 
I've arrived at what probably is the most beautiful ice cream store I have seen in my life. This building right here used to be an ophthalmology and was built by a Japanese ophthalmologist back in the day. And I love that the interior is still here, represented, and you literally feel like you just traveled back in time. They also sell desserts here, some bowls, some chocolate. Everything looks so delicious. Prices are not cheap though. music playing here is giving me all the Harry Potter feelings. And look at that furniture in here. I wonder if that's still the original furniture that has been repurposed and restored. It definitely looks like it. It's so stunning. Okay, I've just been told that here in the main building there is no ice cream being sold. The ice cream is 200 meters away. Opala, don't fall. I think I'm lucky and there is no queue actually. So let's go in and try the best flavor. Wow, there are like so many flavors of chocolate ice cream. Fruit and tea flavored and cheese flavored ice cream. Wow. What do you recommend? What is like the most common one? Oh, everything. That is a 110. Okay, I'll take this one. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. There is no seating option inside, so I took myself a little space outside. And look at that perfection of big ice cream ball. It looks very, very creamy. Yum. That is so good. It's the perfect combination of not too sweet and bitter chocolate combined in a very creamy chocolate, not gelato flavor, not gelato consistency, but like creamy ice cream consistency. I'm still eating on my ice cream and just dreaming about having another pineapple cake inside. That pineapple cake, if you haven't had pineapple cake in Taiwan yet, have it, you will want it in your life forever. And luckily you can buy it here as well. Eating ice cream has been a very nice but I'm way more frozen now, so I'm dressing in my layers. Snack time is over. And I really need to, oh, it's raining. Why again? <laughs> Why? Where I'm walking on right now is a riverside walk. It's a beautiful river flowing on here. And again, in this surrounding with the buildings and the neighborhood, it just feels nature and city combined in the perfect way. Now I have to say that Taichung really, really has a charm in itself. First, I wanted to combine it to Taipei and say it's kind of like a mini Taipei. Absolutely not. It is its own big city and it has its own very unique charm to it. That's what I wanted to say. The names in the bus are also said in English, so you don't only have to stare on the name and on the display, but it's very conveniently done with English. My bus has dropped me off at my destination and my next sightseeing spot, but first I saw that there's this halved riverside walk over here and I love when cities invest into making these spaces very very nice for example by literally just creating walking spaces sitting spaces and a nicer experience for its citizens as well as tourists I'm almost at my next stop and I can already see bits of it look at that wow Mario. Welcome to the painted animation lane. That's where I'm at now. And this road right here is depicting various cartoons, both Disney and anime, other types, all on these walls and people painted them on. So I'm gonna have a browse through, see who I can recognize. I've seen lanes of graffiti, seen lanes of art and the painted village today, of course. 
But this right here is yet again another example of how Taichung is the city of culture in Taiwan. It's these little hidden gems that you come across that people have created and made this place so special. Oh, I love that. <gasps> no way, no way. I watched him as a child. What's his name? I forgot his name. Please remind me. This really is the place where all your nostalgic childhood memories of good old times where you used to sit and watch these cartoons come true. It really doesn't feel real. It feels like it has been printed onto the wall while all this is skill level of artists that I can't describe. Of course, there is a claw machine just next to us, but this one also has things with anime, I think, or cartoons at least. I see some Mario. Simpsons are here as well. SpongeBob! Who knows SpongeBob? That was actually quite a short experience over here. Short, but very memorable and very, very fun to see that. And now I'm heading already to the next sightseeing spot, which is going to be bubble tea, but not just any bubble tea. It's going to be a very special one. I've been seated in this tea shop and it is not any tea shop as mentioned this is the tea shop where the bubble tea was invented the first one and the only thing i want is literally the tea the one bubble tea that has spread into the world all this paper right here literally for one drink <laughs> let's go order literally smell the milky tea flavor in the air here so nice i'm equipped with my number heading back to the table oh god i can't wait i want to know if there has been any change since its creation or if it stayed exactly the same or like images on the wall about pearl milk tea pearl milk tea was the store's manager's secret Lynn secretly sold ice milk tea and ice lemon black teas with pearls for a week in 1987. She finally showed them to the owner after great feedbacks from the customers. My tea has arrived and I can't wait to try it. Oh, it looks so good. This is a small, by the way, and it's quite big, actually. And there was a medium one. Oh, it's very, there are a lot of pearls. It's like almost half the glass, just pearls. Okay. Yum. They are way smaller, the pearls, than what I'm used to. It's like half the size. It's so creamy, the tea. It has a really, really strong black tea taste as well. And it's absolutely creamy and nice. Look, even on the top, you have all this shaked up foam sitting there. And there are, again, so many pearls. Yum. Yum, yum, yum. Happy and full. Time to head out. It is already 10 to 7 p.m. Wow, time passes fast when you're having fun. I am exploring the next spot, which is called, one second, Xing Ming First Street. And it is a bustling area that is known for its vibrant street life. Lots of restaurants, lots of coffee shops and shopping options. And I am walking through a street right now that definitely gives me a little bit of a different vibe than I've gotten from the rest of the city. It's very much filled with shops. I can definitely see how it is fun to come here and do your boutique unique shopping because you can find these beautiful pieces that I've been seeing on Taiwanese women. They know how to dress and they know how to have a good fashion sense. I can see something in there. I think it's like a baking class. That looks so fun. I love these type of activities. I would totally 
join in on something like that. There is also a branch of that tea shop that I've already visited that is not the original store, but they use the same recipes and you can recognize them by that little red logo on their teacup, as well as the name, obviously. 13,500 steps, almost. I'm not finished yet. <laughs> I'm definitely way, way, way more active in Taiwan. The bus station I need literally looks like a spaceship in the middle of the road, it's shining in blue. It has like a curved roof as well. Now I'm saying I'm happy I found it because sometimes the bus stations are just a sign on the road. So nine, that's exactly not the one I need. Maybe this one, three, oh. Oh, there are lots of them arriving there. Thank you. I think I took the wrong bus. I'm gonna go out on the next stop. On the good side, I get to explore yet again another area while I'm searching for my correct bus. <laughs> Ta-da! Found it! Now let's just make sure I don't miss my bus. Look at the bridge! How pretty! And the building behind me and the building over there! Wow, this whole area is like shining! <music> Update on another bad news. All the buses seem to have some kind of delay at the moment and the bus I wanted to take, the third bus I wanted to take, had a 20 minute delay as well, which is why I decided to walk. Maybe I should have taken an Uber. Somehow I didn't think about that option. Now it's too late. Now I'm already too committed for this walk. I have been traveling today all by myself and there was not one moment where I would have felt the slightest discomfort the slightest anything really, it's so safe. For whoever chooses to travel here, it's a super friendly country. People are always willing to help you. People are always ready to jump in. Nine minutes left. I am so close. Okay, two minutes left. And this right here already screams yes. Look at all that food, look at all that light around me. Well, hello from Feng Chia Night Market, where I am right now. And this is my last stop for the day. It is not just any night market. It is one of the largest in all of Taiwan. And this is why I was so excited to come here and see it for myself. part about this market is that there are lots of kind of left and right sections and there's lots of space to walk around as well. You can definitely find lots and lots of food choices here from Taiwanese cuisine and international cuisine, anything really. You can go totally into experiment here. You don't have much to lose because the dishes are very affordable and even if you don't like something, you can just throw it away, get something new. One please. No spicy. Okay. Okay, I got my first dish. This will feel like heaven on earth after not having eaten so long. <sighs> of course, I went for the dumplings. You have to try the dumplings at every market. These dumplings are actually a little bit fried on the bottom. They're boiled and fried and covered in the soy sauce. Oh, so good. I was really hoping to explore this market a little bit more, but it is what it is. Unfortunately, I came a little bit too late, but I can only recommend this market because it is full of food, full of things. It is massive. It is called the largest market for a reason. That also means I only had one dish here. Unacceptable. But I'm gonna get, grab something in the train station. Just a little snack for the way back. I've made it back on time to the high-speed railway station here in Taichung. Whew, that was really, really on the edge because there was a lot of traffic and even with the Uber I was on the edge. It is now 
10 to 10. I have roughly 12 minutes. 7-Eleven to save me. Got my favorite snacks. I'm heading back to Taipei now. <sighs> Made it. This is my ticket. Oh, wrong way. Taichung to Taipei. Double check that this is my train because I have a train number. It says 690 and it's a 690 on the display. The way people enter is just so nicely organized by queuing up, not pushing, taking their time that they need to enter. And again, we are leaving on the minute. The train was supposed to leave 10.05 and it is 10.05. Now I got my most favorite dish actually in 7-Eleven, which has been this rice bowl with cheese. There's a little bit of food inside and it's spicy and it's the perfect snack that I need now. Never disappoint. We are actually going so fast on the train that my ears are blocked, kind of keep popping as if I'm in an airplane. 301 km per hour. That is fast. There is a full on vending machine within the train. Can you believe that? It is so quiet on the train that I have to take the mic and speak directly into it. Even when people get off the train, there is not half a decibel increase in noise. It's just absolute quietness and people know exactly what to do, get their stuff and off they go. New people come in, it really is so nicely automated and like the flow just flows. My time in Taichung has come to an end. I'm heading back to the hotel for a good night's sleep. I managed to do roughly 20,000 steps today exploring the city and I feel like I had the most perfect itinerary planned for the day. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit that like button to support me and to help other people find that video as well. And subscribe if you want to see more videos about Taiwan or other countries that I'm visiting. And I'll see you there. Bye!